the Lord is good and all the time. I want to take this opportunity to welcome each one of us this morning, those who are viewing us from here and uh, from other parts of the world. You are welcome so that we can be able to worship together and be able to be blessed together. Allow me, without uh, wasting a lot of time, to get into our text today, and that is John 13, 34, 35. And our sermon is entitled, The Mark of Christian Discipleship. The Bible says a new commandment, I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Now, the mark of Christian discipleship, which is following Christ, is not coming to church the way we have come to church this morning. Neither is it carrying a cross, wearing modest clothes, attending the church and returning tithes and offerings and all this. The mark which makes us to be known as followers of Christ is none of those things. And therefore, allow me to ask, what are we known for as Adventist Christians? Are we known for good music, health reform, good institutions of learning like University of East African Baraton, Loma Linda University, good hospitals like Better Living, Nairobi Adventist Hospital, and in Kenya, where we have more than 80% claiming to be Christians, what are we known for? Are we known for having the mark of discipleship? Or we are known for corruption, tribalism, regionalism, political conmanship, and hating each other? May I propose to us fellow Christians, with all humility, that we need the true mark of Christian discipleship now, which will be the antidote to our divisions, the isms of this life, tribalism and name them, racialism and corruption in the church and also in our country. The mark of true discipleship is loving each other the way Christ loved us in the context of the New Testament. This love which we are talking about is God's love and his love is eternal and it must make an eternal impact on everyone who accepts Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. This love has to do with the mind. It is not simply an emotion which rises and beaten in our hearts. It is a divine principle from heaven and it, is, it was displayed on earth through the death of Jesus Christ. It is not natural to any human being and therefore it must be imparted in every believer by the Holy Spirit. Romans 5, 5 says, Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. This love then has supremely to do with the will. It is a conquest, a victory, and achievement by the grace of God. With it, we love our enemies. We love the unlovable because it enlightens us of the consequences of hatred, which is anger, bitterness, stress, disease, and even death. If you don't appreciate this mark of discipleship, which is love, how will, I, how will you end? How do I end? We end up hating one another, becoming bitter with one another, attracting negative energy, which attracts negative life. And this will result in stress, disease, and even 
death. Now, Jesus says that this mark of discipleship, which is loving one another, is a new commandment. And uh, we ask ourselves, or I ask, how is it new? Because even in the Old Testament, the issue of loving one another was there. Moses talked about it, and even other prophets. Now, the command to love each other, which is the mark of the followers of Jesus Christ, is new, despite being echoed in the Old Testament, because number one, we are commanded to love as Christ loved, not the way we love ourselves. Because there are people who love themselves so much that they cannot be able to love others. That is why there is corruption, there is holding of material things in this world because love, people love themselves so much that they don't have a room for loving others. Number two, it is a new commandment because it is a product of God's grace in the new covenant and not a product of human effort. It cannot be compared with the secular organizations which are trying to keep us together, like African Union, European Community, or even United Nations. Oh yes, it is not a creation of human being. It cannot be even a mediation committees, like the DRC Mediation Committee, or the bipartisan committee. It is not a creation of humanity. It is a creation of God. And that is why it is a new commandment. Number three, it is a new commandment because it can only be practical in those who are new creation in Christ Jesus. If someone is not a new creation in Christ, he cannot be able to love the way Christ loved. He cannot be a follower of Jesus Christ. It is a new commandment, number four, because God met and meets us where we are, enabling us to rise above, being driven by the basic desires of life, food, shelter, and clothing, which are the source of conflicts and selfishness in this world. If I were to ask, why do people steal? Why do people become corrupt? In order to have clothes, to have many houses, many cars, to eat well, and all this. And therefore the commandment to love one another is new because God comes and meets us where we are to enable us to rise above being driven by the basic needs of life. Because a man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Yes, it is a new commandment because it is governed, it is not governed by the principle of time. Everything that is within time is subject to change, to grow old, deteriorate, and disappear. But this commandment is not governed by the principle of time. It was there before the time was there. Because God's mercy, because of God's mercy and love, it is here with us, transforming everyone who believes in Christ. And it will be beyond this era of time to eternity. And therefore, those who experience it know it as a mark that is carried out without any negotiation or modification, but by the grace of God is there to be obeyed in full. And now let us examine the mark, loving one another. What is envisioned here? 
we need to understand what is envisioned here is not the romantic love, neither the family love, neither the friendship love. It is not even denominational love. It is not the patriotic love of our country and all that. It is not the tribal love, loving my people and all that. No, it is not even of all those. We are talking of agape love, divine love, sacrificing love, which is superior than human courtesy and kindness and even sentiments. It is not affected by time, place, and human circumstances. It is everlasting, impartial, unselfish, sincere, servant, not very good at calculating dangers and difficulties unto itself, and it works without motive of gain or advantage. If it were otherwise, Jesus would have calculated the danger and the difficult of coming to show us this love, and therefore we wouldn't have died on the cross. Therefore, it is a love that moves forward, knowing that the Lord is there and he will see us through. Yes, it is a love that reaches out and touches the cold hearts, the naked bodies, the hungry stomachs, and even the sick. Then, what makes us not to love as Christ loved us? All said and done, it boils down to one word, selfishness, which is attachment to the dust of the earth from which we were created with. Allow me to elaborate this. You see, as human beings, we, are created with, we were created with the two things. And I'll begin with the first one. When God wanted you and me, Genesis 1, 26, he said, let us create man in our own image, in our own likeness. And therefore, man, first and foremost, came from God. And that is why when he took the dust, he breathed in man his own breath. So as human beings, we are a combination of the breath of God and the dust. Now, when sin came, we lost that connection with God. And instead of being connected with God, we were connected with the dust where we came from. That is why we labor day in, day out. We wake up every morning to rush to work just to go and look for food and clothes and to pay rent. And those who want to build, they build. Why? Because our thinking has been turned upside down. Before sin, we were thinking this way. After sin, we are thinking downward. And that is why the attachment to dust is what breeds selfishness, bringing corruption, and making it impossible for us to love one another. It is this selfishness which makes you and me to think in terms of my people, my nation, my country, forgetting that Jesus died for all the world and he came for all of us. And as a result, we only think of having more and more from the dust, not knowing that life is not how much dust of billions we collect. Because at the end of it, you and me, if that is what we will concentrate on, we will end up becoming dust after being consumed 
by fire and brimstone in hell. And therefore, when we are talking of this love, we are talking of love that will make us to be true followers of Jesus Christ. Because discipleship is about following. Following who? Jesus Christ. And you know, this is what the world needs. It doesn't need a lot of preaching. Mahatma Gandhi said, show me one person who looks like Christ, who behaves like Christ, who loves like Christ, and I'll become a Christian. The reason why Christ has delayed his coming, it is because as a church, instead of following Jesus, we are following other things. And therefore, let us now turn to God. Let us remove our eyes from these things of the world. You know what? We become what we focus on. We become what we behold. That is why when John saw Jesus, he told people, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And I say this today, that we need to behold Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, so that as we turn to him, we can be able to become true followers, true disciples of Jesus Christ. It's not a matter of turning to God alone. We need also to confess our deficiency of the divine love. Let us pause for a moment and we examine our hearts. What is in your heart? What is in my heart? Do I love everyone without discrimination, without saying he comes from this region, this tribe, and all that? What else this country after every five years? Is it not lack of people who are true followers of Jesus Christ, despite the fact that we say Christians in Kenya are more than 80%? We need to confess our lack of this divine love and be connected to God again by his grace, so that we can have the love of God poured in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And when this love has been poured in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, we will not think in terms of where we come from, of where we were born, we will think as one the family of God. We will not be attached to things of this world so much that we cannot give ourselves to God. This mark of discipleship, loving one another, the way Christ loved us, is the greatest need of the church today than any other time. Because Christ will not come because we are just preaching. Christ will come when he will be reflected in the lives of his people. And he cannot be seen in the life of his people, in our lives, if we are following other things, if we are following our own ideas and all these, and not Christ. And therefore, church and all of us, we need to reach a point whereby we make God our first. The moment we have this need fulfilled in our lives as a church, and even as a country, 
God will become first in our lives. And when God becomes first in our lives, we will surrender ourselves to him, knowing that when we surrender ourselves to him, even if the world turns against us, he will be there for us. You see, what drives us not to experience this agape love is the fear that if we do it, what will happen to us? I want to allay this fear by saying that the moment we will reach this level of accepting the divine love fully and we surrender ourselves to God, we will not fear anything because he has promised that he will be there for us till the end of this age. He will not abandon us. These things we are focusing on, these things which we are rushing to get, all of them will come to an end. But we have a savior who says, follow me because I was there, I am there, and I'll be there forever and ever. We will not only surrender ourselves, but we will also surrender all we have. This work will never end without us as a church, as followers of Christ, surrendering all what we have. The reason why the disciples of Christ in the first century turned the world upside down, it is because they surrendered all what they had. They reached even a point and sold everything, and they went on to preach the gospel. And because of that, they turned the world upside down with the gospel. It is important to note that the work in these last days of closing the ministry so that for Christ to come will not end with lesser impact than the way it began. If it began with a lot of effort and people surrendering themselves and surrendering what they had to God, even in these last days, it will end when we surrender ourselves and all what we have. And we will do this being sure that God's presence is with us. And he has the ability to provide for all our needs, even when the world will turn against us. Even when will, there will be no even buying and selling. Even when maybe the climate disaster will affect the world to a level whereby there is no food. We will not fear because we are assured that our Father will provide. He says, our food and our water and all our needs will be there. Why are we doubting him? Why can't we wear this mark, this cloth of, disciple, of discipleship? Loving, even the unlovable. Going out and touching the cold hearts. Clothing those who are naked. Supplying foods to those who have need. Why can't we go out and do it the way it happened in the beginning? It's because we fear. We should not fear. Our God is able to provide all our needs. He did it for Israel for 40 years in the wilderness. I want us to know the moment we will surrender ourselves and surrender everything, we will not leave this world for 40 years before Jesus comes. It will be just for a moment and he will provide and after a short period, he will come. And he will also, and he is willing 
to equip us, to enable us to love our fellow human beings without asking if he or she comes from which tribe, region, color, race, or even nation, or even denomination. This is what we are called for, to love the way Christ loved, and it, is, and it is the mark of Jesus Christ. Mind you, I want us to know, it is only when we love divinely, people will know that we are followers of Jesus Christ. And they will come to Jesus for the greatest evangelism. Oh yes, we are talking of evangelism. This quinquennium is about evangelism. In September, we are having one of the biggest evangelisms here in Nairobi. Mark Finley is coming. But allow me to say with all the humbleness that the greatest evangelism happens when we live like Christ. When we are disciples of Jesus Christ, what people want is not to hear. What people want is to see Christ in you and in me. And it is possible by God's grace. That is why Jesus came from heaven to show, that, to show us that it is possible. That is why he died on the cross that is why he's in the heavenly sanctuary ready to give us grace and mercy to be able to live as disciples of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, church. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. It is a new commandment, and it is new. Because the one who says it, lived it. He loved us when we were still his enemies. And therefore he can enable you and me to love our enemies, to love even the unlovable, to overcome our background, to overcome all these things of tribalism so that when people look into us or look at us, they can see Christ. They can see true followers of Jesus Christ. Oh yes, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And by this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And it is possible by God's grace. And I call upon all of us to believe that it is possible. How many believe with me that it is possible to carry out this great commandment and become like the disciples and be the disciples of Christ and have this mark so that when people see us, they'll be able to see Christ in each one of us and they will also become followers of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Our God and our Father in heaven, we thank you because of your enabling grace that it is possible for us to follow you, to be your disciples, to love even the unlovable, to love even the enemies, because this is the greatest sermon. May it be so by your grace in our lives as we live so that we can be able to turn the world upside down with your love. And Jesus, you may come and take us home. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.